Hallelujah. Good night, good night, good night. This is the bishop coming to you on this, the fifth night, as we press into this prophetic mentorship live right here on Facebook. Just waiting for persons to load and jump on. Hey, Irma, it is so good to see you. Uh, greetings. Hallelujah. Uh, Citrin, Dad, and Drika, thank you for jumping on. Yes, Nicola, I receive your dream. I will give it interpretation soon. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. All right, just take a few minutes right now and just go ahead and begin to and begin to um, share and invite, share and invite, invite and share, like, share and invite. Michelle, good to see you tonight again. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for all the um, wonderful comments and the greetings. Um, tonight is going to be exciting. We had a wonderful night last night as we focused on the, the um, seven pitfalls of the prophetic and we excavated and uh, did an expository teaching out of Second Peter chapter 2. We used seven Ps last night to look at those pitfalls. Tonight we're going to be going to some powerful revelations as we look at the seven endurances, the seven attacks against the prophetic. You would want your friends to hear this. You would want somebody that is in ministry and somebody who desire to flow in that kind of prophetic authority to um to 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 to, to come into it. So why don't you just go ahead now and invite followers? Invite followers. Um, start a, a, a watch party. Um, tell some people to um yes Irma good night good night good night hallelujah so tell some people um to jump on the bishop is on if you're in St. Kitts and Nevis I think that we should be live on uh, on on praise FM 99.3 so we want you to take opportunity here tonight um and be blessed by what God is about to share as we look into these into these matters um yes once again get your notepad get your pen this is this is holy ghost schooling all right information that is here is very rich i did not read them in a book i did not hear them at a conference these are things that god has downloaded to me that i am using this opportunity to share with you as well and the bible says in all our getting we must get understanding so tonight that's what i'm doing i'm trying to give understanding because the people the bible says that the people that they perish for the lack of knowledge which means that is ignorance about the word of god why people are perishing not because satan is wicked not because demons demonic powers are strong but because of the lack of knowledge so if we get knowledge then we can rage war with knowledge and we can overcome our adversaries so tonight we are going to be moving into some serious um, revelations concerning endurances so send up the love start the watch party invite friends invite followers um let's let's let get let's get this thing viral tonight let's get this thing all over that people can um hear um the information that will be coming amen and amen and amen praise the lord i feel led tonight to ask my teddy bear my prophetess to um lead us in prayer um so that we can start hallelujah good evening everyone Father, we just thank you, Lord, yes. for your faithfulness. We yes. thank you for your love, yes. your unconditional blessings. Yes. Father, as this evening procedure go forth, yes, Lord. we ask in the mighty name of Jesus for the presence of your Holy Spirit. Yes. We pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Masuraba. We pray in this hour in Jesus' name. Amen. Because we know this is the time. This is yes. the hour. This yes. is the Kairos moment. Yes. Yes. This is the opportune time. Yes. And those who are viewing even now, we know in Jesus' name yes. that your lives will be blessed. Yes. So we ask even now that the arts be received Yes. That the, atten the antennas will be up. Yes. We thank you, Lord God, that this word will drop on good soil. Yes. And that these people, mighty God, will manifest your kingdom. Yes. Your power and your glory in this season. Yes. And we expect for nothing less. Yes. Use your man's servant, mighty God, in a powerful way to impart into the lives of these upcoming prophets and yes. prophetesses. Yes. In Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Amen. So I declare tonight that the words from my mouth will go forth 
forth like a potent seed. It will drop in your hearts and germinate and bring forth fruit in your lives. That the word from my mouth will go forth like a sharp two-edged sword. It will cut and divide soul and spirit, bone and marrow, and become a discerner of the thought and intent of the heart. That the word from my mouth will be like a consuming fire. It will burn up the shaft. It will be like a mighty armor. It will break the rocks to pieces. It will take on flesh and it will bring forth manifestation. In Jesus' name, I command your minds to be attentive and your spirits to be receptive. Get ready and put your pen and your paper together as we go on this journey, as we look at tonight, seven hindrances, seven attacks that come against the, 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 um, the, the, your prophecy. Now, listen to me and hear me very well. Because we started on Monday night sharing about the seven principles of the, of, of the prophetic. And one of the principles that we spoke about was the principle of warfare. So I'm going to go a little deeper in this principle of warfare. I want you to make note of these verses. The first one, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17. In this verse, it was John the Revelator that said he saw in a vision that the dragon went to make war with the remnant of the seed of the woman and with those who are the testimony of Jesus. And so the dragon, the devil, went to make war with those who are the testimony of Jesus. Then again, note this scripture, Revelation 19 and verse 10. For the Bible says that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So by interpretation, we can know that the dragon, the enemy, will always wage war with those who have the testimony of Jesus. And the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So once there is prophecy over your life, once there is a prophetic destiny that you are connected to, the enemy will come to war against that destiny. His assignment is that you will never reach into your prophetic fulfillment, into your prophetic destiny. And it's important for us to understand it, that there are two things that the enemy hates very much. One, he doesn't want you to know your identity, your prophetic identity, and it doesn't want to know your prophetic destiny. It doesn't want you to know who you are and where you are going. That's why he wants to create confusion. But God wants us to understand that uh, we must now hear and, and, and take heed to what the Apostle Paul said to his son Timothy. He said in 1 Timothy 1 and verse 18, make a note of that, 2 Timothy 1 and um, 1 Timothy 1 and verse 18, Paul said to Timothy, rage a good warfare over the prophecies that has gone over your life. It means, therefore, that you have to battle with some prophecies. Some people ask questions like, why do you have some prophecies you have to fight and others you don't have to fight? verse 24. Deuteronomy 2 and verse 24. Make a note of that. Deuteronomy 2 and verse 24. God said, Arise, cross ye over the river Ornan, for I have given into your hand Shion, the king of Eshban, and his land. Begin to contend with him and possess it. It means that God already gave him the land, gave him possession of the land, but they are to fight for it. They are to contend for it. So, on the matter of prophecy, on the matter of prophecy, there's going to be a contending that you must contend, a fight that you must rage for the prophecies that has gone over your life, for your destiny. You have to fight for your destiny. Listen to me and hear me very well. This is true because we need to understand what are the ways in which the enemy will try to attack us and try to attack or hinder our prophecy. I'm going to use the life of Jesus. For the Bible says Jesus was tempted in all manner as we were, as we were tempted. We're going to look at all the enemy attack the prophetic destiny of Jesus and how we try to affect the prophetic destiny of Jesus. So get ready and work with me now as we go into the seven, the seven, the seven endurances, the seven endurances, the seven endurances, the seven attacks against prophecy. Why is my prophecy taking so long? Has God forgotten me? It seems as if this thing will never come to pass. Well, let's look at some attacks as we examine the life of Jesus. Number one, make note of this. 
Number one attack that comes against prophecy, number one way the enemy try to endure prophecy is through anxiety. 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 We see this problem in the life of Jesus. At the age of 12, he was anxious to fulfill his prophetic assignment, his prophetic destiny. So when his parents took him to Jerusalem to a feast, it so happened that towards the end of the feast, as they were going back to Nazareth, Mary and Joseph realized that Jesus was not in the company of the family going back to Nazareth. I just can imagine that Mary said to Joseph, Joe, have you seen Yeshua? And I can imagine that Joseph said to her, I think the boy was with you. After they searched the party, they realized that he was nowhere to be found. So they went back to Jerusalem now to search for him. They searched for three days, three days until they found him. When they found him, he was in a temple and he was speaking to the doctors and the scribes and the Pharisees. Mary went and I can imagine probably she held him by his ears and said, boy, why have you caused your father and I to be worried over you sick? Where have you been these three days? Jesus answered her in a little insolent way, so to speak. He said, must I not be about my father's business? Ah, must I not be about my father's business? He was in a haste to perform his prophetic destiny. Some people, they have wasted their prophetic anointing and have given birth prematurely to their prophetic baby because they are too anxious. And so they run ahead of God. Now look what Jesus had to do. Look at Luke chapter 2. After, Jesus, after Mary rebuked him in that temple, look what Jesus did. Luke 2 from verse 51. From verse 51 to verse 52. Read prophetess. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth uh -huh. and was subject to them. Uh -huh. But his mother kept all these things in her head. Jesus. And Jesus increased in wisdom uh -huh. and stature uh -huh. and in favor with God uh -huh. and men. Oh, so you never hear anything about Jesus until 18 years after. Jesus went and submitted and subjected himself to his parents. And then he grew in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. There are some prophets, they are running ahead of themselves. And so they are not growing in wisdom. They are not growing um, in, with, with favor with God and man. They are not growing in stature. Because what has happened is that they have become anxious. And their anxiety has gotten a hold of them. Yeah, they, they get a little word and they begin to announce and they begin to run ahead of them. Of, of, of everything and everybody. Listen, that is one of the attacks. The enemy will try to get anxious. Anxious not just in the sense of wanting the prophecy to come to pass quickly, but anxious also in the sense of beginning to worry if the prophecy will ever come to pass. Hear what Philippians 4 and verse 6 says. It says that we must be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and thanksgiving, we should make our supplication be known unto God, and the very God of peace shall give us peace that passeth all understanding. It therefore means, my brothers and my sisters who are listening to me on this live broadcast, that you must not worry about the prophecy that has gone over your life. God is not slack concerned in his promises. It is not like man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent. I therefore declare to you tonight that you must cast off every worry, every anxiety, every everything that wants you to become anxious about your prophecy. That's one of the ways how the enemy tried to attack us and make people to give birth prematurely. Some people end up um, jumping into ministry and starting work that God didn't give them the timing to start that work yet. And, 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 and consequently, they begin, they get, they get shipwrecked and they fall into all kinds of problems because they went ahead of God because of their anxiety. They did not learn how to submit and wait on God's Kairos moment to come into synchronicity of God's divine alignment and timing for your lives. So that's not Number one, I don't want to take too much time on one on one point. So number one attack against your prophetic destiny, as we saw it in the life of Jesus, is anxiety. Mm -hmm. Anxiety. Number two attack against your prophetic destiny is doubt. 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 Listen to me. So after Jesus now, 18 years now, and he has grown in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. People were now able to acknowledge and recognize the gift and the calling that was upon his life. And it was now for him now to manifest and to show forth his gift and to walk in his prophetic purpose and destiny. At his baptism, the voice of prophecy came over him and said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Now notice what happened now in Luke chapter 4, when Jesus went in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. In Luke 4, watch verse 2. 
been tempted for 40 days by the devil, uh -huh. and in those days he ate nothing. Uh -huh. And afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. Uh -huh. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones and the to devil become said, bread. And the devil said to him, What prophet is? If you are the Son of God. Now listen, he just got a word from heaven. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And then the devil came immediately and said, If you are the son of God. He was now casting doubt or trying to put doubt in the mind of Jesus. Listen to me and hear me very well. The devil, the devil didn't know exactly who Jesus was. He didn't know exactly who Jesus was. For a matter of fact, uh, Herod sent out his soldiers to kill every baby two years and under just to see if he could get a sweep to take Jesus out. You see, how he became conscious that this could be Jesus, was when that prophecy went out in the spiritual realm, that this is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. So Satan come immediately to test that word, and, and then to try to sow doubt in the, in the heart of the Lord Jesus. Listen to me, and hear me very well. When you get a prophetic word, that is when some enemies now come to test that word. You may get a word that tomorrow you're going to get a breakthrough, a financial breakthrough, you're going to get a million dollars. And my God, for the rest of the day, it seems as if all hell is broken loose, and you're can't find one cent to pay your bill. Sometimes that's how the enemy comes to try to put doubt concerning the word. You must understand how to shake off those doubt. You see, it was in the case of Abraham. When God told Abraham that uh, he was going to have a son, that he was going to be the father of many nations, Abraham uh, had a measure of faith, but his wife... Um, after a while, entertained doubt because she was saying, this word is taking too long to come to pass. So she told her husband, Abraham, I have a maid servant here. I'm, I'm getting up in age. I'm, I'm near 90 now. Uh, there's a maid servant right here. Uh, lie with her and let her be your surrogate mother that she will help you to, to fulfill the prophecy that God has given to you. Listen to me. God does not need your help. God knew how to bring forth his word in his divine timing. What you need to understand is that uh, you must shake it and let it be Resolute in your spirit. It is not about if, it is all about when. It's not if God going to bless you, it's when your breakthrough is going to come. When is a reference word for time. And some of you did tonight, your when begin. Tonight is the season when God is about to cause your prophetic destiny to begin to come in alignment. I prophesy over this telecast and over this broadcast that there are many of you that is watching me right now, that you're in your prophetic moment, you're in your prophetic season, that this is here. The prophecies over your life will not circle any longer in the wilderness but it will come and find landing on your life and come into fulfillment that this is the season for you to walk into your promised land if you are in agreement say a loud amen say hallelujah do something send up some love or something because i believe that you're in your prophetic moment and you're in your prophetic season so listen to me and hear me again that doubt is the next thing you know stop doubting that word that god has spoken to you stop doubting it God is going to bring it to pass in his timing, in his timing, in his timing. God is going to bring it past. Just keep on raging war over it. Just keep on praying over it. Some of you, you might be a late starter like Elizabeth. Oh my God. But the Lord said that the time came when Lot would have been cast. And that is... And that her wife, Zachariah, her husband, Zachariah, it was his time to cast Lot. Some of you, this year, your Lot is cast in pleasant places. That was when Zachariah met the angel Gabriel. And Gabriel said, ah, your prayers have been heard and I am sent. This is your season to be remembered. Cast off everything that wants you to have doubt about the prophecy that has gone over your life. You're going to make it. You're going to be what God has called you to be. You're going to fulfill that purpose and that destiny that God has laid upon your life. It is your season might as well you give God the praise and the glory amen it is your season all right so 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 that's number two um attack that comes against a prophet that comes against a, that come against prophecy that tries to delay your prophecy your prophecy that is why the Bible said Abraham did not stagger in faith he did not stagger at, at the promises but he was strong in faith so stop staggering about your prophecies stop going back and forth this is your season. God is about to cause your prophecy to come to pass. Oh, I feel excited in my spirit. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to quite a few of you here on this, on this broadcast because as I'm talking, I'm getting myself excited because I know that this is my season. This is my season. That this is my season. Every prophecy over my life, it must come to pass. That I am walking into my prophetic destiny this year. That I'm going to see the fulfillment of God's glory upon my life. And so it shall be for you in Jesus' name. Name. Number three, 
I hasten on quickly. Number three, uh, attack against prophecy is discouragement. 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 Sometimes you get a word from the Lord and the enemy does come to discourage you. Oh my God. Can you imagine the big, powerful prophet like, Eli like Elijah? Just called on fire from heaven. The power of God fell on him and, and, and this man saw 400 prophets of Baal and Jezebel prophets slain. And then at a threat of one woman, this man fled for his life and he was under a juniper tree. And discouragement reached him to the point of depression that the man said, Lord, it's me alone, leave. Why don't you just kill me? Take my life and done. There are some of you, sometimes you reach a point of discouragement till it reached to a place of depression that you feel like you want to give up. You feel like, you know, like, 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 like God is not going to come true for you. Like this will never be, this will never, ah, listen to me. You have to rage a war over that prophecy and you got to understand by the grace of the living God that God is, God will break those cycles of discouragement from against your life. Listen, Sometimes discouragement can come from some unlikely places. Sometimes discouragement can even come from close friends. It can even come from people that are that are you know that you hold in high regard, that you respect, and that you you, you you admire. Look in the case of Jesus. Jesus, when he went to, to, to Caesarea Philippi, when he came at the course of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, "Who do men say that I am?" They answered, some say you are John the Baptist, some say you are Jeremiah, or some say you are Elijah, or one of the prophets. Then Jesus got personal and he said, but who do you say I am? Peter. <laughs> Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And as Peter said that, uh, Jesus said, oh Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father which is in heaven. Ah, and upon this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not reveal. And Peter, I said, I shall give you the keys of the kingdom. Oh, Peter, I can imagine for a moment Peter head was just swelling. He was just saying, oh my God. This Peter who just got a revelation. Look what happened a few verses down that same chapter. Chapter 16. Watch verse 22 and verse 23. Jesus began to prophesy to Peter about his prophetic destiny. And look what happened. Read, prophetess. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, mm -hmm. Far be it from you, Lord, uh -huh. this shall not happen to you. So, so, so Peter, 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 when Jesus said, I shall go to Jerusalem and I shall be crucified and I shall be, I shall be this and I shall be that. Peter took him and said, Jesus, far be it from you. This shall not be. Listen, there are some powers and there are some people that want to say, far be it from you, that this shall not be. Listen to me. You're going to own that business. You're going yes. to own that company. You are going to, you're going to possess that possession. Listen to me. Oh, let no other devil and let no other bad mind persons in your life uh, say, far be it from you. I said that this is the year it is near unto you. You are closer to your breakthrough than you ever have been. You are closer to your prophetic destiny than you have ever been. You are closer to the moment of your significant release than you have ever been. Listen to me. Let God give you that grace that will cause you to encourage yourself in the Lord. The Bible speaks about the Messiah in the Messianic um, 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 prophecy in Isaiah when it says that he shall neither discourage, he shall neither be discouraged, neither shall he fail. Can you declare that to yourself that I shall not be discouraged, neither shall I fail. We rebuke discouragement from you. I say, take courage. No wonder why the Lord always say to his disciples, be strong and be of good courage. Take courage. Your prophecy and your prophetic fulfillment is nearer than it has ever been. Hallelujah. Number four. Number four. Take note of number four. Number four, um, endurance or prophetic um, attack against, uh, against your prophecy um, um, attacks or hindrance against your against your, your your prophecy is second thoughts. Second thoughts. Now this same Jesus that rebuke Peter because when Peter said, "Be it far from me," hear what Jesus said to him. Jesus said, "Get thee behind me, Satan, for you are an offense to the work of God." The same man that just got a revelation, and Jesus told him that uh, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. Eh? Jesus told the same man, get thee behind me, Satan. Hey, you have to know some things for yourself. Because sometimes, don't expect other people to know your destiny. This is something that you must have your own personal conviction about. Alright? Listen to me and hear me very well. So I said now, the fourth challenge, the fourth 
hindrance or attack to prophecy is second thoughts. Second thoughts. Matthew 26. This same Jesus who just rebuked Peter some 10 chapters earlier in Matthew 16. Now he goes to get Sedemi. Now he draws closer to prophetic fulfillment. Now the pain of the birthing of that prophecy is upon him. Now the measure of the weight of being crucified. The same thing he told Peter that I must go to Jerusalem and be crucified. And then rebuked Peter and told him, be it far from, um, um, get me behind me, Satan. Now Jesus is in this place now when the reality comes to him that they're going to drive nails through your hand. They're going to press thorns, uh, um, crown of thorns upon your head. They're going to beat you with 39 lashes. All of that. And Jesus, the Bible says, he was sorrowful in his spirit. He was at a point of depression. Hear what Matthew says in Matthew 26. Catch verse 38 and verse 39. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful. Exceedingly sorrowful and depressed. Even to death. Uh -huh. Stay here and watch with me. Watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying, uh -huh. Oh my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. L Nevertheless, we are not, we are not. If it is possible, let this cup pass. If it is, so Jesus don't was having a little second thought. He was saying, Lord, if it is possible, let this cup pass. Some of you, some of you, sometimes you say to yourself, Lord, if I have to fight so much, I, I, I don't bother want this. I, I don't bother want that. Listen to me. Stop having second thoughts. Good things come to those who wait. Oh, and there are some people. Who, when you're in your time of your 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 divinity, when things are happening good, they are there with you. But when you're going to your moment of weakness and your moment of humanity, they are sleeping. They are not there to 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 pray you through. But Jesus, Hallelujah, understood that in spite of how he felt, he had to push a little further. Read on a little more. Go to verse forty-two. Hallelujah. Again, the second time. He went away and prayed, saying, mm -hmm. Oh, my father. And again, this... a second time, he went away. He went a little further. Some of you, what you have to do, you have to just go a little further. You have to just push yourself. Sometimes the weight of that prophecy is on you when you feel like you're overwhelmed. But you have to just push yourself. You have to go a little further. Sometimes there are not people around you to pray you through and to help you out. Sometimes you feel like you want to give up. That place gets said to me, it means the press. That is when, uh, that is what where they press the olive nut to get out the olive oil. And sometimes you go to your place of your pressing. When you feel that press to the point that you feel depressed. But don't have second thoughts. God has not forgotten you. What God has spoken is going to bring it to pass. What God has released in your life is going to work watch over it to perform it. So I rebuke second thoughts from out of your mind. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Take note of Numbers 23 and verse 19. Write it down. God is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent. If he, as he have not, as he not spoken, will he not perform it? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. We go to point number five because time is going. The next, the next, the next um, endurance or attack that comes against your prophecy is the wilderness test. The wilderness test. The wilderness test. Hey, Jesus had to now go to the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Listen, between you and your prophecy, there is the wilderness. It's a test. Uh, 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 uh. It's like this. Prophetess is here. I am here. So there is a promise that God has given to me and I have to get to that promise. But for me to get from here to there, I must pass to the wilderness. And then right in that place called the wilderness, here comes the devil that wants to stop me from getting to my promised land because he doesn't want me to fulfill my prophecy. So he will fight me. So I have to fight in order for me to get to my promise so I can get out of my wilderness. So many of you, right now you're going through some stuff and the devil is fighting your prophecy because you have found yourself in your wilderness. And the wilderness sometimes is a test. It's a test. Some of you, you are going through your test. You are going through your moment. But it is your test that will give you your testimony. Hear what, is it, hear what Deuteronomy 8 and verse 2 says. Um, concerning this wilderness. Read prophetess. And you shall remember that the Lord your God mm -hmm. led you all the way these 40 years mm -hmm. into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. To humble you and test you. To humble you and test you. Continue. 
to know what was in your heart. Yes. Whether you would keep his commandments or not. So sometimes you go through the fight and the struggle, you know, to, and God allows it. So he will humble you and see if you will keep his commandment or not. To see if you will hold on to your prophetic word. To see if you'll hold on to your prophetic dream. To see if you'll hold on to your prophetic destiny or not. Don't give up. Although you are going through a test right now. Because sometimes when God gives you a prophecy, you know, it doesn't come sometime with the glamour and the glory that you expect it to you know. God told Abraham, I'm going to give you a land of milk and honey. I'm going to give you a wonderful land, a great land, a blessed land. Arise and go. And when Abraham got up and he went with his wife and with his other members of his family, when he reached the promised land, there was a severe famine. And the Bible says Abraham and his wife went down to Egypt. It was when they went down to Egypt that they picked up the baggage, Agar. Listen to me. God gave him a prophecy, but when he reached into the, prof the promised land, there was a famine. Abraham didn't understand that I need to unwrap and to dig. Because sometimes when God gives you a word, it might not be to your expectation when that word begins to come into its full manifestation. So you have to learn how to stay with God in spite of what you have seen. Look what happened now with Abraham's son, Isaac. When Isaac reached that land now, and he was in the promised land, there was a famine as it was in the days of, 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 of Abraham, according to Genesis chapter 26. And God appeared to Isaac and told Isaac, do not go down to Egypt as your father Abraham did, but stay in this land and dig well. And the Bible said that, that Isaac stayed in the land and that in that same year, he planted in the land. And God gave him in that same year, hundredfold. Mm -hmm. Genesis 26, catch verse 12. Because that is where God wants us to understand that we have the power to move into. So make a note of that. Genesis chapter 26, verse 12. And the Bible says that the man went on and he waxed. Genesis 26, verse 12. Are you there, prophetess? Yes. Read. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. Uh -huh. And the Lord blessed him. Uh-huh. Continue. The man began to pros uh, prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Wow. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds mm. and a great number of servants. Mm. So the Philistine envied him. Hey, if Abraham had stayed in the promised land at that time, God would have blessed him. Sometimes you enter into your promise, but it doesn't look as how you want it to look and you run away from it. Not knowing that there was diamond hidden under the earth. Not knowing that there was some gem that God prepared for you. Stop running away from what God has called you to and what God has appointed you to. Because God has always made provision when he gives the vision and so and so uh, Isaac had the wisdom the plant in the same year of the drought and God blessed him that the man increased in servants in flock and the man went from wealth to wealth until his enemies envied him I, I, I want to prophesy that somebody this year as you plant into this year as you sow so, as you sow seeds this year that God is going to bless you that your enemies will envy you I don't want God to kill some of your enemies yet I want your enemies to see when God bless you because the Lord says uh, that he shall prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies and your head shall be anointed with oil. Somebody on this broadcast tonight, God is going to cause you to experience a blessing. Don't give up because you're in the problem. You're in the wilderness. Don't get weary because you're in the wilderness. For a matter of fact, hear what God tell um, the people of Israel in Deuteronomy 8 and verse, uh, that same chapter 8 and verse 16. In that, in, the, in, 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 the, in that verse, uh, he went on to tell them concerning the end of the wilderness test. Read, prophetess. Who fed you in the wilderness uh -huh. with manna, mm -hmm. which your fathers did not know, uh -huh. that he might humble you and that he might test you uh -huh. to do you good in the end? To do you good in the end. Listen, your latter shall be greater than your former. God is thoughts for you are not thoughts of evil but your thoughts of peace to prosper you and to give you an expected end, to give you a bright future. God have an end to what you're going through. Listen to me and hear me very well. God is going to bless you in the latter end. Verse 18 of that same chapter says, Remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. God is going to bless you. You're going through your wilderness, but you're about to come out with power. When Jesus came out of the wilderness, the Bible said that he came out with power. He went in filled with the Holy Ghost, but he returned in the 
power of the Spirit are going to look for in verse 14. Can I tell somebody something on this broadcast here tonight that you came out of 2018 with power, that this is the year that your de <laughs> that the devils and the enemies in your life will have to bow, will have to concede, will have to see the hand of the Lord blessing you beyond your wildest imagination. Oh, you are coming out with power. I said this is the year that you are coming out with power. You are coming out with power. And the people of Egypt that came out of Egypt, the people of Israel that came out of Egypt, they spoiled the Egyptian and they came out with great riches. God said that he's going to bless you this year. He's going to prosper you. I feel like prophesying. Makuria. I decree it over you in the name of Jesus. This is your season for your supernatural blessing, your supernatural favor. All right, time is going. The wilderness experience, the wilderness experience. So I just gave you some verses that you should take note of, that you should have them there. All right, number six, number six, number six, endurance or attack. Number six, endurance or attack is fear. Fear, intimidation. Intimidation is the next way the enemy come to try to intimidate. He tried it with Jesus. And if Jesus is Jesus, how much more would he try it with you? Eh? Look what he did concerning Jesus. In Luke 13, let's get verse 31 to verse 33. Look what, look what he did. On that very day, some Pharisees came saying to him, mm -hmm. get out and depart from here. Yes. For Herod, Herod wants to kill you. Mm -hmm. And he said to them, go tell that fox, Behold, I cast out demons and perform cures today yes. and tomorrow. And the third day <laughs> I shall be perfected. Watch it. Ay! Hey, they said, look here, Jesus, get out of town because Herod wants to kill you. Jesus said, go tell that fox. <laughs> I cast out demons today, I cast out demons tomorrow, and on the third day I shall be perfected. Oh, Jesus was not intimidated. Sometimes threats will come to you for you to run away from your prophetic assignment. Sometimes threats will come to shut up your prophetic gifting. Fear, it was what the enemy used to lock up Timothy. You know? Because hear what Paul had to tell Timothy, Second, um, 1 Timothy 4 and verse 14. Make note, 1 Timothy 4 verse 14. He said, Timothy, Neglect not the gift that is in you which you receive by the laying on of hands through the prophetic presbytery. Why was he neglecting it? 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 verse 6. He said, Timothy, stir up the gift that is in you which you have received from me. For God has not given you the spirit of fear but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Fear paralyzes you. you know. Fear actually is the dark room that develop the negatives in your life. For those persons who used to take um, um, photograph with, 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 with film in those days, you take the flame into a dark room and develop the negatives. That is a perfect picture of fear. That is why, that is why Job could say, the thing I fear the most have come upon me. What did Job fear? He feared the death of his children. And so when he made a sacrifice every morning, it was not done out of faith. But he was motivated by fear. And he said, lest they sin against God and anything, happen, anything bad happen to them. Listen to me. You have to begin to be fearless. That is why God told his servant Joshua, he told Jeremiah. He said, Jeremiah, I know that you live among some people with some kind of fear, you know. People that will intimidate you with your facial expression. He said, do not look on their faces. For I have given you the word in your mouth. And he said, only be strong and be courageous. Only be bold and be strong because I am with you. He told Joshua. He said, Joshua, you're going over the promised land. But do not be afraid. Only be bold and be courageous. The Lord says, fear not what men can do unto you. Ah, the psalmist says, uh, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Fear is a crippling power. It is actually a spirit, a demonic spirit that comes to paralyze you, that you don't fulfill your prophetic destiny. Listen to me and hear me. Because there are some of you, you can't sing, but you'll never sing in public because of fear. Your mouth starts to tremble and your voice starts to crack. Hey, some of you, you have a prophetic gift, but because of fear, you'll never tell somebody what you perceive in your spirit. You get nervous. I Bind and rebuke that spirit of fear. I command your gift to rise. A prophet, therefore, must have holy boldness. Boldness that he can look in the eye of the person he's prophesying to and speak to them. If you are prophesying and you're moving the prophetic, stop closing your eyes and prophesy. I know you want to um, concentrate. But a part of the prophetic conviction when you prophesy to people is to look them in the eyes and tell them the word of the Lord. 
Yeah? Hey, fear will bind you and fear will blind you and fear will cripple you. It is so in the natural that when you fear, a certain chemical hormone is released called catecholine that cause your blood vessels to constrict. And that is why sometimes somebody will see something and they are freeze and can't move because fear literally paralyzes you. Eh? So let's get rid of fear. Fear can be smelt by a dog. So when the dog smells your fear, he becomes agitated that you may want to hurt him. So let not the enemy smell your fear. Fear not. The Lord thy God is with you. Ah, only be courageous and be strong. That's number, that's number six. So make note of those verses, Luke 13, 31 to 33, first, um, first Timothy 4, verse 14, 2 Timothy 1, verse 6 and 7. Hallelujah. Number seven, the last one. The last um, assignment against your prophetic destiny, last attack to come against your prophecy, to try to hinder your prophecy, and this one is subtle, family pressure. Family pressure. <laughs> hey, the devil knows your family is the closest thing to your heart. And he will come and use your family as a distraction. He will use your family to get you. And that is why you see those in the prophetic always have some struggles and challenges with family. Because the enemy come and attack the family very much. For a matter of fact, Jesus' brothers and sisters did not believe in him. It wasn't that did afterwards that they believed in him. For a matter of fact, I'll prove it. Let's go to John 7, verse 3 to 5. John 7, verse 3 to 5. Make a note of it. His brothers therefore said to him, Depart from here and go into Judea, and your disciples also may see the works that you are doing. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Continue, continue, continue. So she's going to read again. Uh, go again. John 7, 3, 3 to 5. His brothers therefore said to him, Depart from here and go into the Judea, that your disciples also may see the work that you are doing. Mm -hmm. For no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. Yes. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. So they, 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 they were using sarcasm and they were using like, they said, why are you staying here? You know, go and show yourself to the world. You know, go with your disciples, all of that. And that's how they were jeering and mocking him. Watch verse 6 and verse 8. Then Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, mm -hmm. but your time is always ready. Mm -hmm. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me, yes, because I testify of it that it works, so Jesus said, works are evil. Jesus said, My time has not yet come. Why are you guys trying to push me like that? Watch verse 8. You go up to this feast, I am not, yet going up to this feast, for my time has not yet fully come. My time has not yet fully come. Listen, sometimes family pressure can reach you. For a matter of fact, Jesus, hey, I say this with all humility, you know, that the, 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 your, your, your assignment, your purpose, your, your, your God-given assignment and purpose is number one on your agenda. I know that family is very important. I accept that. I have a family of my own. But I'm telling you, that many persons, because of that connection, they have been robbed of their prophetic destiny. That is why when you're getting ready to get married, be careful who you choose for a spouse. Because you need someone who will help you to fulfill that prophetic destiny that God has given to you. If that person does not compliment you in your prophetic destiny, both of you are going to fight and tear each other. It's going to be a problem. Hear what Jesus said in Mark 3, verse 31 to 34. Mark 3. 31. It's, it, it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is very important for us to get this in our understanding. Read, prophetess. Then his brothers and his mother came, hmm. standing outside. They <laughs> said to him, sorry. Then his brothers and his mother came, and standing outside, they sent to him, calling him. Mm -hmm. And a multitude was sitting around him. Mm -hmm. And they said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. Mm -hmm. But he answered them saying, mm -hmm. Who is my mother or my brothers? Who is my mother or my brother? What a statement Jesus said in the, in the public. Read on. And he looked around in a circle at those who sat about him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Here are my mother and my brother. Continue. For whosoever does the will of God is my brother hey. and my sister and hey. mother. Hey! Hey, because sometimes your own family will sell you out. 
Sometimes there will be there will be there will be what we call oh soul wickedness. You know, um, rivalry among siblings. That is why, you know, love your family. Flesh and blood is important, but they, the enemy can use them to try to block your prophetic destiny, to throw you off course, to make you miss the mark, because you always have to try to find a way of how to please your family. And so in doing so, sometimes you end up not pleasing God and missing the mark. Those are seven attacks that can come against your your prophecy, those were the attacks that, 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 that the enemy used against Jesus. Now, last of all, let me share quickly. How do I overcome these attacks? How do I rage war over my prophecy? Paul told Timothy, rage a good warfare over the prophecies that has gone over your life. How do I now rage war to make sure that my prophecies come to pass? Somebody said, tell me, Bishop. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you how to rage war over your prophecy. I gave you, and I'm going to give you again, four um, steps to rage war over your prophecy. Number one, recall the prophecy. Write them down. Bring them back to your memory. If you don't have a prophecy that you receive from a prophet and you have, a, you have the promises of God because the word of God is sure word of prophecy, write them down. Bring them to your memory. That's number one. Number two, remind God about the prophecies. Hmm? Bring God to remembrance. Isaiah 43, verse 26. What does it say, prophetess? Put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. Uh -huh. State your case that you may be acquitted. So God said, put me in remembrance. State your case. You know, tell me what, you know, you know, bring me into remembrance of my word. Important. Hallelujah. That we understand this principle. You know, that we must recall the prophecy, remind God about the prophecy. Then number three, you must rebuke the devils fighting your prophet, your prophecy. So you begin to rebuke these attacks. I come against every spirit of anxiety. I come against the spirit of fear. I come against every spiritual power that wants to block me. Everything working and operating through my bloodline or through my family. Every ancestral and generational curse that is operating against me. Every power that stands at the edge of my breakthrough. Every spirit and every curse of near success syndrome. I bind you, I break you, and I paralyze you. Every power of progress arresters. Every power that wants to arrest my destiny. Every durable in my life, every contender that is pointing your fingers against my destiny, wanting to arrest my destiny, I command your hands to dry up. Every power that wants to shut up my heavens from over me, I command that power to fall down and die. I rebuke every power of lack and insufficiency. I rebuke every demonic power that wants to make mischief and create all kind of strife against my life, that want to create rumors about my name. I break your power. Those are some of the ways that you war over your prophecy. You have to now begin to rebuke those spirits that is fighting your destiny. Some of you, you should have gotten your breakthrough long ago. But there are some powers that is fighting your helpers. Ah, look at the Mordecai over there in Babylon. He saved the life of the king. And the king was sleeping all these times and never remembered that Mordecai saved his life. Until one night he couldn't sleep. And asked his, his bodyguard to read something from the book of the records. And it was found in that book that Mordecai had saved his life. He asked his bodyguard what honor and dignity has been done for Mordecai. And when his bodyguard told him nothing was done, in the same time, there was a man coming in the court to bring bad news to the king that the king should hang Mordecai. Oh, what a God we serve. What a God we serve. He's a God of timing. Listen to me. I hear God said, I'm going to wake up your helpers today. I'm going to wake up your helpers this year as you begin to rage war over your prophecy and ask God to open for you the book of remembrance. I said, this is the season. Listen me. It was Noah who got a prophecy over his life from his father um, Lemek that said that this one shall comfort us because of the ground which the Lord God has cursed for man's sake. Listen to me. You see, when Noah was born, his name was called Noah because it means comfort. This one, this one, this one, this one will break the curse in the family. He had prophecy over his life until some 500 years later, the Bible said, and God remembered Noah. 
And when God remembered Noah, that was the time that the book of remembrance was opened up. When Noah raised an altar to God, he was a curse breaker that God painted the rainbow. And God says, I will never curse the earth for man's sake again because Noah broke that curse of hardship. Some of you, you are in your family as a curse breaker. You're going to be the first millionaire in your family. You're going to be the first to raise up and become that apostle in your family. The first great prophet that shall rise up out of your family. That's why the enemy is fighting you so much. That's why the enemy is trying to block you so much. And you got to begin to understand, you must rebuke those devils that wants to block your prophecy. Somebody rebuke him now. Rebuke him now. Rebuke every curse over your bloodline. Rebuke it now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And then, last of all, hallelujah, you must redeem your prophecy. You must redeem. Sometimes there are some prophecies that you have to deal with dangerously. Some of you, you get prophetic word, but you're not putting a demand on the prophecy. Ha! Ah, I remember one time I was in Africa ministry and I was prophesying to this girl and I said to her, ah, I see that you've been married for 12 years and that you're without child. And she said, yes, sir. And, 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 and she confirmed that what I was saying was so. Her husband was not there in the service. So I said, if I be a man of God, this is the season that God shall open your womb and that you shall give birth to a baby boy. And, and she looked at me with a little glare as if, you know, uh, yeah. and I saw a next woman run from in the audience because this woman was not responding to the prophecy. And she came with money in her hand. And she said, man of God, if she doesn't want that prophecy, I take it for myself. <laughs> Let me show you something that is profound in the word of the Lord. Look at Deuter um, Job chapter 22, Job 22, verse 27 and 28. Most of us just quote 28, we don't quote no, um, verse 27, but quote 27. Read 27, prophetess. You will make your prayer to him, uh -huh. he will hear you, uh -huh. and you will pay your vows. Uh -huh. You will also declare a thing, and it shall be established for you. Uh -huh. So light will shine on your way. So you will uh, make your prayers and uh, pay your vows, and he will hear you. Then also you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. So if all you're doing is praying and you're not paying any vows, you could decree and declare from now some things will not be established. Because some of us, you are under a curse because you owe God money. You go up to altars and you make pledges and you don't, you, you don't, <laughs> and you don't redeem it. I tell people this year, what you need to do, you need to pray, pay, and prophesy. Make your prayers. Pay your tithes. You know, sometimes there are some seeds that we can enter into covenant with God and say, God, I'm making my covenant. This is the covenant. The prophet has declared over me that this is your this is the future that you have that you have shown him for my life. And God, I am sealing that prophecy over my life. And I plant my seed as a prophetic covenant between you and I. This is my covenant that I cut between you and I. So sometimes you can redeem your prophecy. Huh? Sometimes you can redeem your prophecy through the seeds that you sow in your life. There are some people who don't understand these principles. And so they go ahead and they make bad mouth of everything. But if you look in the word of God, the people are always called um, to make covenant with God and to cut covenant with God. Now today God don't call us to carry cows and goats and bull because Jesus shed his blood. But there's one thing that uh, mirrors or that substitutes the goat, the cow, and the bull. That is our money. So when we bring our money, it's as if we are bringing our cow, our goat, our bull. Some people, all they have ever given to God is feathers. Ah, give God a worthy sacrifice. Pray, pay, and prophesy. You will see the blessings of God begin to come on your life. That is how you rage war of your prophecy. Why don't you write down all the prophecies that we can remember? Write them down tonight. Why don't you bring to your mind some things that God has spoken to you? Set them on paper. All right? And then after you do that, before you go to your bed tonight, remind God of these prophecies and say, God, these are the things that you have said to me. You are not a man that you should lie or the son of man that you should repent. If you have spoken it, then you'll perform it. You know, remind God of it. Then thirdly, begin to rebuke the devils that is fighting your prophecy and delaying your breakthrough. That wants you to be in the wilderness longer than God intended for you to be in it. Rebuke that devil. Then, 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 then lastly, take a seed. Find a good prophetic house. For a matter of fact, if you feel like sowing it right into this prophetic anointing, 
that you are hearing, why don't you click on the paper link that is on this broadcast and say, man of God, I am sowing a seed for the prophecies that has gone over my life. And I want you to agree with me that these prophecies will find landing and fulfillment upon my life. Yeah, do that. Do that. Because tomorrow night, I'm going to be praying for breakthroughs. I'm going to be praying for prophetic settlement. I'm going to use tomorrow night in a shorter version. And I'm going to take personal one-on-one -on -one prophecy. I'm going to bring up some of my time tomorrow night. It's going to be extended. Because I'm going to minister to some people personally over um, this telecast. I will speak to you what I perceive to be the mind of God. Prophet Chris now is bringing up the information on the screen about the PayPal um, um, for persons who want to sow in the, prof in the, in, in the prophetic. And then um, I want to take the time out as well to... Um, <coughs> sorry. I want to take the time out as well tonight just to answer a few questions before we break from this telecast and um, this broadcast live. And uh, um, so you can go ahead and start writing your questions. As you are preparing to write your questions, we'll find a way of how to answer them sufficiently. I want to remind you that yesterday in my prayer time, as I sought the Lord, that he spoke into my spirit, you know, and um, I asked him, and uh, this is what he impressed in my spirit, that I should raise up a Gideon 300, that there are 300 people that I should mentor you know, and pour my spirit and pour my knowledge and pour my revelations into their lives. And I don't know right now if you want to be one of them. But if you're interested to be one of those Gideon 300, go to my website. There is a link there at the contact that says Gideon 300. Click on that link. All I would require of you for now is just to um, fill a little short form that is on the website that will ask for your name. And your email address so then we can thereafter contact you and communicate with you and tell you how we can engage with you in the Gideon 300 mentorship program prophet Chris just put it up on this on the on the on, on the screen there the Gideon 300 mentorship program would you let this man of God um, be a be a spiritual influence and blessing to your life to take some time to speak into your spirit and to help you in your development as you go up and grow up in God would you allow this man of God to be a spiritual um, uh, provider in terms of giving you food for sustenance to grow in the Lord all right so um, this is this is this is this is this is some good stuff that we have been experiencing and receiving on these five nights so far I'm sure that you have been blessed and uh, I'm sure that God has really under this word through his servant. Now, will you go ahead and write some questions? Um, mm -hmm. Prophetess, James. let's go ahead. Let's start taking James, the questions. James, good news. Um, mm -hmm. He says, Bishop, how do we know if someone is operating in prophetic anointing? So many people have attached the title prophet or prophetess to their names. Mm -hmm. How can we tell if what we are hearing is coming from God or coming from man? Yeah, yes. Are they prophesying or prophet lying? You know, James, you ask a very, very intelligent and good question, you know, because this is what takes um, discernment. Now, listen to me. That's why Paul encouraged us in 1 Corinthians 14 that we should judge the prophecy, that, you know, others should listen so that others will speak and others will judge, that we would, should judge a prophecy. One of the ways how we judge the prophecy is that there are certain questions that we must ask. Number one, is this vessel a reputable vessel? Is this man of God a, a, a true man of God? Um, is, he, is, he, is he someone that carries a very shady character? Okay, because Jesus said, take heed how you hear, which means that you have to be careful of your source. That's number one. That's number one. Number two, is that you have to see if the person while they were prophesying if they were conscious of their surrounding or if they were in a state of ecstasy eyeball rolling over and all of that kind of thingy sometimes you will know that that is a demonic manifestation thirdly did you sense the anointing as that person speak did that word bear witness with your spirit did you feel a conviction 
fourthly, uh, is what the person saying is the information accurate and precise or close enough? Um, next way that you can um, you can discern is um, is the spirit of the prophet, because you can know a person by your spirit, and you must learn to know people not after the flesh but after the spirit. You know, and sometimes this take training of our spiritual senses for us to be able to discern some ways that we can that we can address and that we can look at the, the, the problem of discerning and evaluating if a prophet is speaking or is prophet lying. All right? Some prophet you will just see a look of pride on them. Be careful of them. Some prophet they talk too much and their prophecies are very long. You know God is, God does not talk I'm sorry. Sometimes people will prophesy to you for a good half an hour. You know, it doesn't, you know, uh, you know. Uh, so, so these are some things that you must be careful of. Is the prophet, is the prophet feeling for words as he prophesied to you? Is he searching for words? Those are some things that you, you use. Is he bubbling or is he flowing? Those are some ways that you can use to detect the prophecy. All right, go ahead, prophetess. Nicola asks, what if a prophet is using divination and prophesy over your life and it came to pass? How does that affect you? Uh, what, uh, mm -hmm. Was there a curse released? Uh, that's a good question, Nicole. That's a very good question right there. Um, because I remember one incident in my own personal journey in the prophetic. When I was going to Bible school, we had a team of ministers. In that team, I was the prophet. You know, I've always been prophesying for a very long time. I was into names and telephone numbers and all of that. And um, this girl came later on and joined the team. And she also was now prophesying very accurately. And on one occasion, she said to one of the members of the team, the Lord is angry with you because you have committed an abortion and the baby is crying against you. And... Uh, I felt very cute about it because some, some you know, month before, that same girl had confessed that situation to the group and repented and we went through deliverance and went through prayer. So I wondered to myself, why would God bring up back this information right here to the girl's embarrassment? And um, I went and I spoke with the leader of the group and I said, I'm a little concerned about this prophecy and about how, how this person is flowing. The man looked at me and said, Richie, be very careful, you know, that you might be jealous that this girl is also prophesying. I was a little offended. And then he said to me that um, God has raised up this girl to bring back the fear of the Lord in the group. I said, okay, because she was always a hard prophet when she prophesied, no man. is hey. By the time I was coming out of the room, meeting with the, with the leader, my eye make four with the girl's eye. And the girl said, why have you consulted against the Lord and against his anointed? When she said that, I felt a righteous indignation. I pointed my finger at her and I said, you spirit of divination, come out. She fell and the demon began to cry out of her saying, now am I found out. Now am I found out. Now am I found out. Ah! I never see a thing like that. She was in this. She was posing as a prophetess, but she was operating with a spirit of divination. This was the same spirit that followed Paul and said, hear ye him. These are the men that show you the way of the salvation. She was saying something right and something accurate, but the source was wrong. So divination is the opposite of the prophetic. So there are prophets that operate with a spirit of divination that they can give you accurate information, but their source is wrong. And when they speak their prophecy over you, sometimes those prophets, Prophecies is true and make can come to pass. But it is a dangerous thing for someone that carries a spirit of divination to minister to you. Because there are certain things that can affect you spiritually. It's a serpent spirit that will come and try to attack you. Because the word divination means to prophesy through the aid of a serpent. Okay? All right. Bless God. Pastor um, Bradley asks, are there levels to the prophetic anointing and how does one move from stage to stage? Yes, there are levels if you are if if you are if you were if you caught if you heard the message I did on Tuesday night 
on the roles and the realms of the prophet, you'll understand the levels. I use the life of Samuel to show you the different, the seven levels in the prophetic. Level number one, the prophetic is the beginner's level. When you just start prophesying, you just start feeling the gift coming on you. Level number two is the increasing level. That as more as you flow in the prophetic, it is the more you increase in that prophetic, like a muscle, it begins to grow. Then level number three is the establishing level. When God establishes you, when people see the prophetic in you, and when people begin to affirm you, and when people begin to announce you, you should not go ahead at level one and start to announce yourself. Let people announce you before you take the title. Let somebody ordain you prophet before you ordain yourself. All right? So level number three is when God now establish you, all right? Level number four is when you become a prophetic mentor, when you begin to raise up sons and daughters, when you begin to raise up and train, you begin to operate with the Elijah man, uh, mantle. Level number five is the arcane level, when God begins to whisper in your ears, where you begin to understand secrets and mysteries about the prophetic and the foundation of people's life and how to correct these things in their life. All right, so only a few persons have reached that level because the word arcane means uh, mystery and secrets known only to a few. All right, so only a few prophets have reached that level. And then the next level is the level that we now call the manifested level. This is when you begin to have miracles, signs and wonders accompanying your prophetic. Blind eyes open, deaf ears open, all of that. Uh, only a few have reached that level. And the last level is the level that we call the absolute prophetic. That is when you begin to operate at 100% accuracy. When like Samuel, none of your word will fall to ground. All right? How you move from one level to another depends on the faithfulness with the measure of the prophetic that God has given to you. You increase by your measure as you continue to press time, as you continue to sharpen your edge. If you, every one of us, God give us an edge, you know. My edge is a prophetic edge. So I must sharpen my edge so I can be as effective as I can. Or you sharpen your edge. You go to a prophetic conference, you spend time in prophetic environment, you spend time in the word, you spend time quiet in your spirit, you spend time training your spirit, you spend time listening and trying to soak in God's presence. Those are the ways or you climb and grow up and go further than the prophetic. Hope I help you there, Mr. Good News. Continue. Myrna asks, what must be done in... Sorry, what must be done in order, in order for prophecies to come to pass? What must be done in order for prophecies to come to pass? Myrna, I think I answered that earlier by telling you how to war over your prophecy using the four R's, which is to recall the prophecy, remind God about the prophecy, and then rebuke anything blocking the prophecy, and then to reclaim or to redeem that prophecy, whether by sowing your seed or enter into a covenant with God. All right? Hallelujah. Go ahead. Remember, Anna, Anna did not come into her prophetic fulfillment until she made a vow. That was when her son Samuel came, because Samuel himself was a vow unto God. Yes, read it. Hallelujah. So, those are some questions that we just take, that we just took. I don't know if there's any other questions that anybody wants to raise at this time. Um, I want to once again use an opportunity to tell you that um, there is a lot of information that is available on the website that can help you to, to grow up in the spiritual maturity. Um, so you can visit my website there. Prophet Chris will bring back that up again, www.richardogordonministries.org. There are some of you that you are listening to me and you are impressing your spirit. You are blessed by the teachings. You have been inspired. You have been encouraged by the teaching and you want to be a blessing back to the man of God. You want to sow into what you have heard then please um, go to our PayPal link and Prophet Priest is going to put that up again, the PayPal link that you can um, you can sow your seed. Um, uh, for those persons who want to be mentored, you want, uh, you want a man of God who can speak over your life, who can help to give you prophetic prophetic counsel. I'm looking for 200 persons that I can get to know, that I can um, be a, a, a spiritual influence in your life. So go to my website and sign up for the Gideon 300 um, mentorship program. The Gideon 300 mentorship program. All right. So that is some stuff. Okay. Um, I'm going to need everybody tonight to really um, follow the instructions I gave. Um, um, tonight, just go and read some war over the prophecies and make some declarations about your prophetic destiny. 
Um, tomorrow night, I'm going to prophesy to you. Tomorrow night, we're going to have live prophetic service here on Facebook. I'm going to bring you to the camera and I'm going to speak into your life what I believe the Lord is saying. May God give me grace. We're, we're up on our seventh day of, of the fast. Tomorrow is the eighth day. We climax on Sunday, nine day of birthing the promise for 2019. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I trust that you were blessed, that you were inspired by this presentation. I'm going to ask you, please, after you have uh, finished with this broadcast, that you will um, share and invite. Tomorrow night, we continue the same time at 6 o'clock. Um, and we will push until the Lord tells us when to stop. All right? So um, that is for tomorrow night. So go ahead right now. I need at least... 30 persons that is on this broadcast that will make up in your mind that before the prophetic mentorship um, that the bishop is doing, tomorrow is the last night. Between now and tomorrow, I am going to sow a seed. I need at least 30 people that will say before now and tomorrow, I'm going to sow a seed. Because I want to pray for some people tomorrow that will connect and that... Um, that 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 will that will say I have raged war over my prophecy last night, this is, which is tonight, and I am putting a redeeming seed that my prophecy will speak on my behalf. So those persons who have been delayed, who have been on that place where it seems as if your prophecy is lingering, plant a seed tonight or tomorrow. So when I pray, you would have had prayer, the pay, and the prophesy. Remember, pray, pay, pray, pay, prophesy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm looking forward to seeing many of you um, responding in that way by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. Robert, this, any, 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 any input you want to give? You are prophetess and um, you have some serious experiences. I know even prophetic mentorship is a serious thing because I remember once you had a, a woman, you were desirous that you wanted her to mentor you. What was the experience that you had? Yes, share with the, share it was with back in um, Anova, Jamaica, and um, there's a woman, she came to the community um, for a time and a colleague of ours um, introduced her to us. So this colleague said that she was manifesting the power and the glory of God, she manifested the healing power, and of course, she was a Sami, she could sing, and I mean she could sing. So at that time, I was seeking the Lord concerning mentor and a spiritual mom. Mm. So um, my husband was told about her, so he decided to invite her to the church. So she came to the church, and we had to host her because in um, rural Anova, you know, there's no hotel, mm. um, no guest house really. Mm. So um, sh she had to stay with us and her granddaughter. So, you know, she began to draw to me, you know, and I said, well, God, maybe this is the hey. spiritual mom that you hey. brought to me, you know, because mm. I said it must be answered prayers. Mm. So I was excited. But after um, about five days you know or so i realized should i say five days no i think it's more than that after about two weeks i realized that um something was wrong um with me really because at nights when i should have been in bed with my husband cuddled under his arms mm. i would have been at the door you know of this woman's room he gave her one of the rooms so we would have been I would have been at the door and she would be teaching the word and she would be you know just there so I, I thought it was just an opportunity to you know be mm -hmm. mentored so I find that every night I would position myself before I go to bed at her, um, her room door to hear what she have to say so um, she also ministered in the church and uh, my husband apparently saw some errors in her gift mm. and I think um, she had a, a strong character flaw there and um, what happened was that because my husband saw those errors in her she got offended and then one day she said to me that um, 
I, I didn't know that then, but now I can say this. So one day she said to me that, you know, um, the Lord is going to kill my husband. Hey! She said, the Lord is going to kill him. She said, anybody cross her or interferes with her, God is going to kill him and mm -hmm. you will manifest your purpose on your own. And like uh, I was so naive at that time, so vulnerable. I was so open, you know, and um, I got oppressed, so oppressed. And uh, my husband asked her to leave. And even when she was leaving, she was still saying, you know, he's going to die and all of that, you know. And then at that time, I believed because I already had received a transfer of spirit mm. and a evil soul tie. Wow. So what happened was that it affected my very strength. My strength was gone. I was weak. Um, I could not do housework and I love to do my housework and my chores, you know, mm. and um, I could not tend to my husband like I should. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all these things happen. So what happened is that I had to learn a valid lesson. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible said we should try the spirit. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I took the time out to try the spirit. And so I got myself so attached. And then what happened was that when she left, was that for two months, two months, people, hear me very well. Two months, I had to go through deliverance every day. Every this day. was not a choice for me. This was mandated by God. It taught me many lessons. You know, some of us going around, as soon as we meet somebody, oh, you know, this person is my spiritual, this, my spiritual, that. And wow. too many of us have too many prophets in our lives. Jesus. Yes, the surest word of prophecy is the Bible. But when God anoint a, a prophet, I'm not, I'm not only speaking because um, Bishop Richard God is my husband, but he knows me that I test everything. Mm -hmm. And I know he has an authentic prophetic ministry in his life when he prophesies it come to pass i'm just saying and there are many others like my spouse many others mm -hmm. but i'm saying this to say that we must wise up the bible said we must be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dog we must try the spirit mm -hmm. we must discern motives and intent mm -hmm. we must the bible says that we shall know them by their fruit mm -hmm. so we we, we we must discern the fruit behind it so that our life Lives can be sharpened and we, we, the, the, the rough edge can be smoothed out and then God can just raise us up and use us mightily, use us to plunder hell and populate heaven in the kingdom. This is a time for us to wise up and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And this is the time for us to discern and this is the time for us to receive powerful, undiluted word of God so that our life can be transformed. Don't just go with the preaching and the barking. Yes. Get teaching into your spirit. Yes. Get teaching into your life. Yes. And when it, the word comes forth, you look back into the Bible. You will see that the word is there. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. I believe that God will raise up a company of prophets through these um, days that he has been ministering. Arise, shine, for the light has come. Amen. And the glory of the the Lord is risen upon thee. God Amen. bless you. Amen. 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 That's powerful stuff there. Man, I learned my lesson too because I had to work so hard two months every day doing deliverance with my wife as well. It's true. You know, clean up the mess that was made because of this woman that we opened our house to. And this woman was, uh, was anointed, so to speak, you know, but she had some errors. So, um, Brothers and sisters, we share these things with all grace, with all humility, because we believe that it is our testimony and our experiences that can help people to come to that next, that next level in their maturity, in their walk with God. It is on this basis that I decided to do this mentorship live on Facebook because I've seen so many persons who are going around and they really have nothing to say and they are making a mockery. And I believe that God has anointed me as a father and as a general in the kingdom for such a time as this. And so I decided to give up my time and give up myself. I want all of you that is here to really, you know, take the value of what you have heard tonight and let it sink into your spirit. Okay, time is up on us. We're going to be moving to head on down to 
another meeting tonight. So I'm going to pray for you now. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I thank you for this live audience that is watching me by way of this medium. Thank Let every word that I have spoken find root in your life and germinate and bring forth fruit. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that none will leave it the same way that they came. My special prayer for them tonight is that you will increase their discernment, that you will cause them, Father God, to become more sharp and accurate with your intuition, that God will cause your spiritual senses to be activated. Uh, Father, I pray that those who are on this broadcast that have prophetic giftings in your life, that you'll sharpen them, that you'll add to them, that they'll increase, that they'll move from one level to one next level, that they'll go higher and higher in God. I pray, God, that you'll speak to the Gideon 300 that is listening to me, persons that you'll inspire through my broadcast, that will say, I want to connect with this man of God, that, Lord God, you'll touch them right where you are standing, and that they will now begin to connect those that you have chose for me to mentor, that do God will connect them, yes. that God, yes. your will be done, yes. and that your kingdom yes. will come. I yes. pronounce the blessings of God upon you now. Yes. Take the blessings and be blessed and prosper. I'm looking forward to seeing you on tomorrow night. Go ahead tonight and start sowing on paper. Jesus. Start giving seeds as the Lord speaks to you. Um, do it unreservedly. Whatever the Lord has laid in your heart, whatever he has put on your spirit, do it and watch what the Lord will do before this week is finished. Amen. Have a good night. God bless you.